Hi everyone, this is Priscilla from Teaching Brainiacs. Welcome back to our state exam prep series. And here today, I am going to do some operation kind of questions. And here we're talking about Betty, and she has three cats and four dogs. Each of them get one scoop of food twice a day. Which expression can be used to show how many scoops she feeds her pets in one day? So I already did the underlining of the most important pieces, which is the amount of cat she has, the dogs, the amount of food, and that we wanna know twice a day. And in case you didn't know, twice a day means the magic number two, right? And then it says how many for the actual final answer, we need to find out how much she feeds her pets in one day. So this is a way that the state exam preparers actually try to trick you because pets is in all in it's like encompassing everybody like pets such as dogs cats birds etc and then it says one day since we're already talking about pets we have to know the total number right total number of pets and in this case all we have is three cats plus four dogs because we have to add all of that up together second step which is also important although you don't really recognize it but one scoop and for two times a day that's another way of multiplying right because if it was two scoops for twice a day things will be a little different which is why we cannot bypass that step in this problem okay so uh, one times two is two and then step three now we have to figure out how much it is in one day well we have the total number of pets and now we know it's two scoops per day, right? So now we're gonna do seven times two. In this case, it's 14. The reason why I'm doing it this way is so that way you could think through the problem before you even touch this. Because if you start touching this, it could very well confuse you. Because even these kind of problems kind of threw me off at first as well. Let's go to letter A. So we have two times three. Well, are we multiplying the amount of pets we have? Well, where do the two and the three come from? Oh, maybe they thought that we do two times three, right? So twice a day times three, and then now we gotta multiply by four. Well, that wouldn't quite make sense because now we're multiplying two times a day times the pets, and then now we're multiplying by the dogs, the amount of dogs we have. That doesn't quite make sense, right? Now, the same thing here. We're gonna multiply twice times the amount of cats, and then add four. Well, that's nice, but then we're not finding out how much the dogs are eating, okay? So these definitely don't work. We have two plus three plus four. Well, they're a lot closer to what we're looking for, but what happens? Yeah, we add the three plus four, which gives us a total amount of pets, but then adding just two, that's not enough because it's as if one pet is eating and that's it. Well, we have to think about all the seven pets, right? We have seven pets. We have the three and the three cats and the four dogs, okay? And then now, well, let's see. We have a three plus four, which is the amount of pets that we have in total, right? So this is the total pets. And then they're eating twice a day, because then now two times the actual number seven, which is the amount of total amount of animals we have, or pets that we have. So this ding, ding, ding is our answer. Here we have another multi-operational kind of question. I'm not sure if you remember. I know us older folks know what we're talking about when we hear PEMDAS. And PEMDAS is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Can never forget that one. <laughs> so PEMDAS is nothing but explaining how to do these kind of problems. Because it's like, whoa, whoa, there's so much going on there. And this one stands for parentheses. And in case you didn't know, these are parentheses and these are parentheses. The second is an exponent. And if you haven't dealt with exponents yet, these are numbers that have a power on the top. So it's like 10 to the second power, five to the third power. All right, so those are just some examples of exponents and we'll get to that in future videos. M is for multiplying. The D stands for division. A stands for adding and the S stands for subtraction. First step, well, we find the P. The P, we have parentheses. These are the in inner parentheses, right? So then we have to do the three times four. It's three, six, nine, 12. We have 12 minus six, right? And then 
we still have parentheses, plus 4 times 2. Now we have exponents, but in this case, we don't have exponents, so we don't need to worry about that. The next part is to multiply. But before, yeah, we'll multiply, right? And then we will, we can't divide because there's no division. We can't add because there's no division. And then subtraction. So 12 minus 6 is what? Well, so well, we do our fingers because I still use them. Don't be ashamed. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have 6. So 6 plus 8 equals, well, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that is our answer. B14 will be your answer. And I, I'm not talking about bingo. <laughs> Let's read this together. Ed hiked 3 kilometers on Saturday and swam 2 on Sunday. How many? meters did Ed hike and swim and swim on Saturday and Sunday right so we have to think about number one it says and right for Saturday and Sunday so that means that we're gonna have to do some adding and then there's a difference of meters and kilometers or kilometers however you want to say it right so one thing we have to know is that one kilometer equals 1,000 meters so if we know here that we have to add, well, we have to add the number 3 plus 2, right? Because we're talking about hiking and swimming. So we have 3 plus 2, which is 5. And this is 5 kilometers. But guess what? We're talking about kilometers to meters. So the way I teach this is if it's 1 kilometer, excuse me, 1, yeah, 1 kilometer to 1 meter, and this is different ways that they can put it. M stands for meters, if they don't write out meters. If we know that we have 5 km, well, the way we can do this is if, to get from 1 to 5 would be by multiplying by 5. And the same thing on this side. We would have to multiply by 5. And if we multiply 5 to, by 1,000, that would get us 5,000 meters. All right, because remember, we are doing conversion. Remember, we divided whether it came to the fluid ounces. And if you did not see that video, please check it. It's in the fraction video. So, and if there are things that you do not know, try to make your best educated guess because that's all we could do at this point when we're at the exam. We can't ask anybody. You can't do any of that kind of stuff. Which expression can be used to find the value of the expression below? Now we have the numbers 1,284 divided by 4. Let's look at our answer choices. Let's see what they did. They did 1,200 divided by 4 times and parentheses. So off the bat, I see that they already did something called the break apart method, which all that means is that you take a number like this and you break it apart. Exactly why it's called break apart, right? So a number like 1,284, we are going to break it up into easier numbers to work with, right? Because 1,200 plus 84, right, does equal 1,284, right? So that is what they did here. So we have the 1,200 divided by 4 and then 84 divided by 4. But remember, this was all the added. Knowing that now, we did it on our own, right? And then which one of the answer choices follow this? Here we have the rounded question. Rounding, excuse me. <laughs> so what is 15.74 or 15 and 74 hundredths, the TH at the end, rounded to the nearest whole number? First things first, anytime we're rounding, we have to know what we're rounding to. So it says nearest whole number. So we're knowing that we have to do the whole number and that's something where it's good to know our places. And that's where I use the place value chart. I don't care what grade you in, if the place value chart helps you to keep on track, then let's do it, right? So we have the decimal, anything to the right of that decimal, we have to go to the tenths and the hundredths, right? And then we have the five, which is in the ones place. And then anything left of that would be the hundreds, the thousands, and so on, right? So now we know for sure we have the whole number, and then that part would be the decimal. That's important for you to know. Now it says the nearest whole number. So 
the nearest whole number would be this one. So the way we have to round is by using the number behind it, which is the 7. Now the 7, if it's 5 or more, we go, the number goes up. I always write that to the side when I'm doing rounding problems to help me remember. Anything lower than that, the number stays the same. And let's see what that means. So the 7 will tell this 5 to do what? To go up or stay the same. In this case, because it's 5 or more, right? Because the 7 is bigger than 5. That's what this part means. That means that it tells the 5 to go up. The 7 is bigger than 5. So this means that it tells it to go up. And it goes up by 1. So this number now becomes 16. That's it. A school raised a total of $1,648 to purchase new books. The money raised will be shared equally among eight different classrooms. What is the total amount of money each classroom will receive? So I'm already underlining important numbers that I know for sure would help me finding out these kind of problems. So we have 1,648. And then we have shared equally. So that kind of already tells me that we're gonna do a division problem, right? So shared equally among eight. So we already know that we're gonna divide 1,648 divided by eight. And believe it or not, this is it for this problem. Depending on how you divide, you do it the way you were taught. Um, I could always go over that another time if you're interested. But for this one, I'll just do the repeated subtraction, which is kind of like the old school method. And um, all I know is that eight into 16, well, let's find out what our eight times tables are, right? If you forget, do this to help you with your nerves and stuff, because I know when I was taking tests, I was always nervous. So I like to do this, and I tell my students to do this to help you in the meantime, especially when you're just remembering your time tables and um, learning about division. Well, eight times two is 16 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 5 is 40. I mean, I could keep going and going and going. Um, and then we could do 8 times 6 is 48. And then I'll stop here. 8 times 7 is 56. If I went too fast, I apologize. So we have 8. And then how many times does 8 go into 16? Well, we have the answer there, right? We have 16 and that's 2 times because 8 times 2 is 16. Fantastic. So now we do 16 minus that. Now we're dropped to the 4. Um, 8 can't go into 4. So now we have to put a 0 here. And then now we bring down the 8. So now how many times does 8 go into 48? 8 times 6 equals 48. So we put the 6 and we're at 0 now because 48 minus 48 is 0. The answer is 206. We did it. This is our final installment of the state exam prep series. I am overwhelmed with all the love and support I've been receiving. I'm so thankful to each and every one of you for letting me know what has helped you for your journey. Always know that you can reach out to me if you have any questions or suggestions and you want me to do more of these, please feel free to let me know down below. My final message for you is you got this. You can do it and I am so proud of you. Please let me know down below how it went. I would love to hear all about it. Until then, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.